Yeah, that thing is just wedged in there like crazy. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you tuned in on a lot of my recent videos on the maintenance on the IS300, I finished up the engine maintenance, which was a big pain. It was fixing all those oil leaks and everything that was on here and fixing all the oil seals. So now that I got that all taken care of, while I was underneath the car, I noticed that uh, the steering boots were leaking and actually one of them's got a big old hole in it and it's just uh, letting dirt and dust in there. So today I'm gonna replace the steering boots. So I ordered some Beck and Arnley aftermarket boots and it comes with the boot obviously right here. And it also comes with a big clamp and this is the clamp that goes on the big side. And usually what you have to do is you gotta roll this thing and crimp it. And then it also comes with this weird wire, which I don't even know what the hell this wire is for. A lot of people in the comments and the reviews for this product don't even know what it's for, so that's probably just garbage. On the other side of this, the small side, it actually uses the factory clamp that you could remove and put back on. I'm gonna try to install this with a method on YouTube by trying to squeeze the tie rod in through this little hole right here, which I'm not sure how it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try. And the reason why you do that is so you don't have to worry about an alignment because you're not unscrewing that thing and then trying to screw it back in on the original position. So we're gonna attempt that today, so stay tuned. So we'll start on the passenger side. So I've taken my wheel off, jacked it up on jack stands, and I actually turned the wheel all the way to the lock in so that way I could access all this stuff on this side. That's one of the things I forgot on some of my brake videos to just turn it this way so you can access everything when it's out like this way instead of trying to reach behind the wheel well to do stuff. So I've got it over here. I gotta pop off this guy right here. So to get access to that bolt down here, I need to loosen the caliper up. So I'm gonna loosen the caliper and swing it out of the way so I can access this. So to take off the caliper, you could, you could loosen it up here which just takes out the caliper part, leaves the bracket. And that's what you usually do for pad changes. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna release it from the spindle, which is the two 17 millimeters back here. So I was able to get that brake caliper off. The rotor came right off with it because it, it wasn't really attached too well and I don't want that thing falling off on me, but it's easy to take on and off. I left the caliper up there. I used a bungee cord, hooked it to the spring to make sure it doesn't fall on me while I'm working on this. So now that I'm in here, I can ha have full access to take the cotter pin out to loosen the bolt and try to pop this with the puller. So the easiest way to remove this tie rod is to actually get a real the puller tool. So I've got this power belt tool that I got on Amazon. It was only like 15 bucks. It was the cheapest one I found that looked like it would work. I measured the distance right here and then I, I got the one that fit right there. I think it was like 27 or 28 millimeters. So I made sure that that was the right size and it is the right size on here once I get it on there. So this is how you get it out. I've tried this before without using this puller by trying to bang this and trying to bang that nut, it's not gonna work. So it's best just to invest in this tool and get it done right away. So what you do is loosen the crown nut just a little bit. It doesn't fall on you. Get this right into there and then you screw it down. This particular tool has a little socket up top. So you just get the... Tighten it, boom. Popped it right there. Took two seconds. Yeah, definitely invest in that tool. This makes this job a hundred times quicker. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this uh, boot also, cause I'm gonna plan to replace this boot or just check the condition of it. But I figured taking this boot out will make it a little bit easier to slip that thing on. So I had already pried it off a little bit. So it just came right off. You just gotta take that ring off right here. So now that we got that off, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that Ziploc bag trick on here. You put a little Ziploc bag over here, you grease that Ziploc, and then you slide that new boot on. We'll see how that works. So I got a Ziploc. What you do is you basically put the Ziploc around here. And then I got my, this regular Walmart multi-purpose grease. Just go ahead and get some of that and just rub it all around the, the tip here. And then once you get a good coating on here, get that coating, get the boot, and just squeeze it around and, 
and it's, it's kind of a bear right around that hole. Uh, some people try to heat this up. Let me heat this up for a little bit and see what happens. Put this with some more grease. Flip it back over. Oh yeah, Woo. got that baby on. Woo. Oh yeah, so just that little bit of heat at the end really helped it get past that little hump. So now that we got it, everything in here, I'm gonna cut the old boot off. Get First gotta get this clamp right here over through this hole also, but uh, that should be easy. And then you just cut that old boot off and you're done. So before we move on, I'm gonna get out my new super clean foaming degreaser. I'm gonna spray it onto here, get all that dirt and grease and everything out of the way. I gotta make sure this ball joint is nice and clean so I can repack it with grease with the new boot. So that way there's no contaminants and dirt and dust in here that'll mess up the ball joint. So I found this stuff down at the local auto parts store, super clean foaming. I'm using it at full strength just to get rid of all this grease and everything that's been dripping around here. And with the foaming stuff, it actually sticks to the surfaces and stays there. Just clean up this oily mess here and let it soak for a little bit. And then I want to wipe it down. So everything is pretty much clean now. I got the, I got all the dirt and grease inside this little part. So I'm gonna repack it with grease, slide this baby up and then try to clamp it down. So now that we got this clip through that little hole, you basically wanna put the boot right here. There's a little notch groove right there and then you tighten this guy back onto there. So right now I've got the steering rack all the way turned this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and straighten out the steering wheel so that way I can bring the accordion back towards the center. So that way the e it's easier to reattach it to the middle. So it's right on. I'm about to go lay under there now and get this pop this in place so some people do it the easy way and just use a zip tie i'm doing it the hard way and using this strap that it came with so what it does is you, you loop it i think you loop it around a couple times just to make sure that it catches and then you roll it with a like a needle nose plier or something The thing with this one is you could use a zip tie with on it because it's not really a rotational boot like the CV boot on an axle. This thing stays pretty much static. You gotta have it tight enough where it won't pop out of the, the groove that it's in. All right, so now that I got it on here, I'll put this thing on, just roll it up so it, it rolls it tight. Probably just go ahead and snap this, clip this extra end off for now. All right, I think I've got it pretty tight. I'm not going anywhere. Let me just straighten this thing out. Squeeze the two tabs on the side. All right, get a little hammer and tap it in. All 
All right, pretty much tight on this one. Time to do the other side. So the passenger side boot isn't ripped. It's still pretty solid, but since I'm already doing this and I already got the part, I'm just go ahead and change this thing. This is still the original boot from 18 years ago. Everything here is original. Even that boot over here that I took off on the other side was still an original OEM knock from 18 years ago. So just go ahead and take care of all this all at one time right now. I'm gonna time lapse this side. Spray this side clean with some of the super clean. Just wipe everything down once you're done and then reinstall the tie rod just the way you took it off tighten it down and we'll be good here hey guys thanks for tuning in on this quick video on changing that tie rod boot it's a pretty simple install especially with that trick using the grease in the ziploc bag i take no credit for that i saw that on youtube when i was uh, researching how to get this on without uh, worrying about my alignment and I uh, discovered this trick and it worked like a charm. You just gotta have that heat gun and uh, just a little bit of elbow grease and you get it right in there. So anyways, if you guys found this video useful, I'll give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and subscribe. I do a lot of DIY videos and projects on my IS, my IS250 and my Sienna and whatever else I'm working on around the garage or the house. So thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you guys next time.